Now, Pragnananda generally takes his time in the opening and he does so here as well. And now pushes his pawn to e5. It's e4, e5. Very simple, very solid. Firuja brings his knight out to f3. This knight attacks the pawn in the center. Pragnananda defends it with knight c6 and we have the Rui Lopez. What a start to this event playing the most solid opening at the most prestigious event. Prag says a6 and he tells Firuja, do you want to go for the exchange Rui Lopez? Firuja says, no, thank you. I go back bishop a4. Now there are many, many ways to play, but knight f6 is clearly the main move. And Firuja goes for the main line with castles. Bishop e7 leads to the closed variation of the Rui Lopez. But Pragnananda now chops off the pawn on e4. This is known as the open Rui Lopez. It's a risky pawn to be taken because now white plays d4. And if you take here, you are in trouble because this opens up the file here. And that's the reason why Prag goes b5. Bishop goes back to b3 and now puts his pawn on the center of the board, defending the knight here. Pawn takes on e5 and notice that the d5 pawn is hanging. So Prag defends it with bishop e6. This is all well-known theory and seems like Prag has chosen the open Rui Lopez as his weapon for this tournament. We'll see whether he'll keep shifting or whether he'll come back to this opening. Firuja now plays his pawn to c3. This is very logical. Next up, you bring your knight out, bishop back and so on. And Pragnananda now thinking he has a few moves up his sleeve. He goes bishop e7. It was also possible to develop this bishop actively on the c5 square, but he chose it to put it on the e7 square. White brings his bishop back. Now, this bishop is attacking the knight, but it's well defended. And so for Prag, a very logical move now can be castles. It's a simple move because there's no real threat, but he goes bishop g4. He moves that piece again. As soon as the bishop left its pressure here, he goes bishop g4. And now look at this move by Firuja. He says, come, take my knight, because then after this, if you move back, I can slowly start to move my pawns. So that's a very cool move, queen e1. And Prague is well prepared. He goes knight c5, already trying to put his knight on e6. Firuja now defends his knight on f3. Now, you might be a bit confused with this move queen e1. Is it a novelty? Not really. Gukesh has already played it against Yakuboev before. So it's a well-known move and this position has been reached before. That's the reason why you will see Prag has 1 hour 54 minutes while Firuja has 1 hour 57 minutes on the clock. The knight goes to e6 and now the king comes to h1. Again, an idea that Gukesh played in that game. One plan is to just move the knight away and hurl the f-pawn down the board. That's the reason why he goes bishop h5 because if knight g1, he wants to put the bishop here and trade it off. So that's prophylaxis here. Knight p3 played by Firuja. Very interesting move because if now bishop g6, then queen e2 and you want to defend it this way, Prak says, sorry, Ali Reza, I am taking your knight and destroying your structure. And so now the structure is a bit mangled up. The idea is f4, f5. If white gets that in, Prague is in pre under pressure. So he goes bishop g5, good move. f4 is not possible now because you simply lose the pawn. And that's the reason why Firuja now plays rook g1 and he tells Prague, I'm attacking this. Also, this is the advantage I received because my g file has opened up. But Prague, the advantage that he has gotten is that now after exchanging, he has the control of this square. You can't take queen c1 because then queen h4 comes in to increase the control. So he plays it with the knight and he wants to put his knight on d3 and push the pawn forward. So very interesting position now is developing with white's idea clearly being to start pushing his pawns while Firuja uh, Prag's idea is to stop it. He's brought his queen in and he's stopping that. He's also... Ooh, Firuja brings his rook up. 
and he says to the queen if you go back i am all ready to start pushing slowly and steadily in that position so prague has to be careful he goes queen h5 now you can't push because you lose your rook and what does ali reza firuja do next now he plays his knight to d3 fantastic this knight on d3 is beautifully positioned it defends this it promotes the idea of f4 and firuja might want to just go queen e2 and rook g1 so his position is suddenly starting to look a bit cohesive now prag castles and i think that's a logical move also next up i think he may want to get his rook here and start attacking the e5 pawn firuja plays queen e2 i like this move because this move indirectly defends the rook and now guys f4 f5 can be an idea so if you play rook e8 rook g1 maybe g6 already you have to be very careful with this move f4 coming up but prag now has pushed his f pawn down the board and played f5 very cool move firuja has to take and guys what has happened here notice that suddenly the idea of f4 f5 has lost its charm but now the e file has opened up with the queen being here and the rook can swing over this is very interesting also do not forget that this e5 square has been in white's control on the other hand black's trumps are clearly visible these pawns are weak on f2 and f4 pragnananda's queen is menacingly positioned by the way look at these two queens staring off against each other oh prag threatens mate in one here on h2 square tricky prag tricky prag attacking the h2 pawn pawn comes up to f3 defending this rook and also defending this pawn on h2 now the rook comes in to f8 keeping up the pressure on the f4 pawn with his knight and the rook <sighs> ali reza firuja now moves his queen yeah where is he moving it queen f2 i think slowly and steadily the position is so complicated and has so many nuances because both sides have weaknesses this knight is beautifully placed here on c6 to stop the white knight from coming to e5 but it's slightly passive there and the time also 34 minutes for ali reza while prag down to also 34 minutes they both have to play 16 more moves rook f f6 has been played and firuja brings his rook to the e file that's a very logical move is later on he may want to play rook knight e5 followed by rook coming up here prag brings his queen back to f7 i like this because now you see there's one attacker two and three attackers on the f4 pawn how will he defend it is the question here firuja he plays his queen to g3 he defends it this way he also keeps pressure here on the g7 pawn it's as if all the pieces are just moving one or two squares at a time that's how closed and complicated this position is prag goes rook h5 maybe he wants to shift the rook here and attack this one more time or maybe he wants to shift his other rook and attack here on h2 so firuja actually is under some pressure now he goes a4 i like this move maybe he just wants to take take and get his rook to a1 and enter from the a file that might be the idea in the position but pragnananda takes his time and plays rook h6 nice move rook at 6 played and the thing is if you are able to get this move rook h2 queen h2 rook h2 king h2 it's an advantage to black because white has so many weaknesses and whenever you have weaknesses queen generally gets stronger than the two rooks that's the reason why ali reza firuja defends his pawn on h2 that's what he does now rook h3 attacking the queen the queen has to move where does it go Firuja down to 5 minutes he has to play 12 moves no increment remember he plays his queen to e1 pragnananda still has 16 minutes the position is looking interesting still e6 knight is under pressure he goes rook takes f3 this is not a great idea because imagine now knight c5 great move if you take the knight i have rook e8 and you lose the queen 
so that cannot be any good and so knight c5 pragnananda now has to play knight f8 but he goes queen h5 what a move now rook e g2 good move and this would give a big big advantage here but he instead goes knight e6 maybe not the best choice because now queen takes g4 is possible this move queen takes rook has happened Black is exchange up knight g5 played by Firuja with 3 minutes on the clock. He's threatening mate in one here with rook e8. Not at all easy to stop. But Pragnananda needs to find some good move here. He has two defenses with 97 and 95. Why are both these moves strong? The reason is after 95, fantastic move. If you take with the pawn, I take queen g5 and I'm completely winning. I've shut down the e5. And if you take with the rook, which is what Ali Reza is planning to do, this is the key point now the rook is no longer guarding the h2 pawn so here prague finds the stunning defense rook h2 king h2 notice there's no checkmate here because the knight controls the square but you can play queen check queen to f4 check queen h5 check both are possible prague takes his time there he has three minutes to work it all out and see if there's anything he's missing but I don't think he is missing anything. He has taken on h2. And this has been such a complicated game. Both players matching move for move. Firuja had a small chance if he had found rookie g2. But he was unable to. And now Prague plays queen h5 check. If you go king g2. I'm going to give you a check again. If you go uh, anywhere else. Let's say king g1. I will again give you a check here. So it's not a big difference. King g2 played. And Prague has to give this check again. The king has no real squares. It can go to h1. But then there also, I'm just simply going to check you from h5. Uh, that is the thing. Right now, white has two extra pieces. But it's not enough. Pragnananda has basically worked this out to a draw. Um, Firuja just thinking whether he should go to h2 or h1, which is a logical question. He decides to go to h1. And if only he had the move, he would have checkmated Prague with rook e8. But Prague gives a check. King g2 played. And I think they repeat again. Queen g4. Both players didn't want to draw this game. They are such fighters. They both want to fight. And as you can see, no one's offering a draw really let's see who is the first one to offer a draw here Firuja looks at the score sheet and he says I'm going to play king g2 and offers a draw the arbiter comes in uh, and yes he says I'm going to play my king to g2 I think that is uh, game over what a interesting battle by both of them i think the arbiter is just checking and i guess they have to agree because it's been repeated three times also both the players i'm sure wanted uh, are completely fine with the draw because there's no way out of it so the first game of this match uh, of this tournament candidates between firuja and pragnananda has ended in a draw and the players shake hands, they agree, and that is the end of the game.